I was quote unquote recruited wrong and, and the pay structure was not what it was said to be. And so uh, a year into it, I had found myself getting uh, a $418 check for the entire month and working 60 to 70 hours a week. In the back of your mind, your dreams should be real, right? Thanks all for tuning in to Dreamcatchers, where we make things happen. Dreamcatchers was formally launched to unlock the hidden potential in successful, self-motivated individuals who desire to take their life's work to the next level but need support to evolve. We are a collective group of professionals with various backgrounds that use our talents to assist those individuals in realizing their wildest dreams by providing education, inspiration, and direction. This podcast is where we share the lessons we've learned along the way to catching our dreams and give you some context around the how and the why to each approach to put you further ahead on the journey to catching your dream. Are you ready? Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Dream Catchers podcast. I'm your host, Jerome, and I've got the great pleasure of having Matt Moylan with me today. Did I get it right, Matt? Did. Thanks, Jerome. Appreciate you having me on it. It really is a pleasure. Yeah, man, this is awesome, man. So the power of LinkedIn, right? Matt's right. All out in like Kansas City, out in the Midwest. He's an insurance guy, and I heard him on another podcast, but I knew of him, and he, we actually reached out and connected several months ago. And so I just been following him and his journey. Heard him on Dion Huey's Multifamily Investor Situation Room podcast. Listened to all the jewels he was dropping. I was like, man, like <laughs> this is cool, but I want to get to know the story on how he got to the place where he is. So we're bringing him in and sharing him with the tribe. So with that, uh, Matt, do me a favor and give us a little bit of, uh, about your background and what you're currently focused on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thanks again for having me. Uh, my background is, you know, I'm, I'm a Midwest boy. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska. Both my parents are teachers. And so education just kind of runs through my blood and uh, really is just kind of what I'm ingrained to do. Uh, so I went to school actually to be a teacher. Uh, physical and health education. I have a passion for for that kind of stuff, and um, you know, again, just teaching and and being an influence in people's lives and, and kids' lives. And uh, so, went through that whole process, learned about myself that man, I really do love educating, but school isn't for me. Uh, you know, <laughs> having having the bell system ring my you know my life every minute, every day, uh, it just wasn't for me. So, um, I used my network and actually moved down to Kansas City and kind of took a chance on myself and my personality to uh, dive into the business world, even though I didn't really know anything about it. So um, that was about six and a half, seven years ago. And so here I am now. Uh, I've been doing insurance ever since and, you know, obviously bumps in, in the road, but uh, all good because you learn from your experiences. Um, and so now I, I'm actually focusing on uh, a very couple select uh, niche areas, um, working with real estate investors as well as uh, successful families and, and businesses, creating and implementing um, unique insurance solutions for their situation and for their asset portfolio. Nice. So, what age group were you working with when you were? So I was K twelve. Um, so I did a, did a little bit of everything, but I really enjoyed working with uh, with the high schoolers because they were I could interact with them more and and you know play some more interactive games and get truly competitive with them. So that part is super interesting. You won't know this, but I coached high school football for seven years, and so at one point my dream in life was to be a head football coach at a high school. And that be it. All my money come from passive strategies and I just be there to serve the players. I, I always thought that space for varsity was like the scary space because you're like the coolest kid in school. Uh, you can't go talk to your parents because you're probably doing things you're not supposed to. Your friends don't know anything more than what you know. And so being a coach puts you in that space where they trusted you. You could be a confidant and an advisor. And you could help them through what I thought was probably the scariest point in their life. So Yeah, that's absolutely. They're very cool. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, so you, you said a few things in that. And the one thing you said is you realized that the school system wasn't for you. And so you jumped out and started bet on yourself. 
which a whole lot of people aren't willing to do. They want somebody else to be responsible, right? They, they don't want to take that risk and be responsible for themselves. So was there a specific moment or place where you were like, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore. I need to transition and do something else. Yeah. So I, yes and no. I, I would say that the, the memory or the, the thing that I remember most about kind of that light bulb, if you will, is both my parents sat me down individually and said, hey, son, you know, tell me about what you're doing now and how are you implementing things in the classroom now? And so I did. And they said, okay, well, here's how it was when we started, you know, 25, 30 years ago. And here's how we've progressed. So I challenge you what does 5, 10, 20, 30 years down the road look like? And do you want to do it at that point? Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, that's a great question. I, I, I don't know. And it, it scared me because I was already kind of on the fence of not necessarily agreeing how teachers were, you know, taught or, you know, were certain requirements or, you know, being limited of, what they can teach, you know, and to the state standards. So that kind of made me take a step back and be like, okay, what, what do I enjoy about this teaching experience? You know, and, and why do I like it and why don't I like it? And where do I go from here? So I would say that's probably the, the quote unquote light bulb moment for me. So that long range plan and that vision casting, starting with the end in mind is critical because it puts you on a different path. And, you know, I think the courage to say, I don't know, is brilliant, right? Because a lot of people just try to fake it till they make it, keep doing and push with this certainty or they want everybody else to believe they have this certainty. And the reality of the situation is they don't have a clue and they're terrified just like everybody else. So kudos to you for being honest with yourself and those around you. And so was it just your parents that helped you along the way or did other people show up to join you on the journey? No, absolutely. So when, when I was student teaching, and that's kind of when I made this, this decision. So I was never actually, quote unquote, a teacher. I was never hired by a district. But um, during the student teaching process, uh, I had two kind of mentors that, you know, one that handled my K through six, and one that handled my, you know, seven, eight, basically kind of like nine through 12 high school. Um, and so both of those guys, uh, they were both male. They, they were big influencers in my life because they would sit down and say kind of similar questions to what my, what my parents asked. And obviously as the semester went on, um, I would get questions from my parents and I'd go to my two mentors and say, Hey, what was it like when you started? You know, and both of them were, you know, I say fairly young guys, you know, they were 10, 15 years in their experience. So comparing to my parents who started you know, a number of years earlier than that. Um, it was nice to get different perspective, but at the end, you know, it, it kind of made me challenge myself in the same way of what does that look like 30 years down the road? And do I, do I find myself still wanting to be motivated down that road? So did you, did you decide that they weren't living the life that you wanted to live and that was part of your decision to make the transition or was it just, hey, I don't have the clarity or specificity I need in order to continue down this path? Yeah, so I think that that's a great question. I think that in the end, you know, I, I know how I am and, and I'm a very driven person. I'm, I'm a very, uh, if you will, freelance type of person. Um, and <laughs> my dad always says, you know, I have a bill or I have a bell that literally tells me what to do, when to do it every day of my life except for the weekends. And even then I have my wife to do that. <laughs> so he's like my, my, the bells at, at, at school run my life. And that just kind of struck me like, you know, do I want someone else or something else to be telling me what to do every day, every minute, or do I want to have and give myself a little bit of freedom, freedom to grow and, and be my own person in a way. So there it is, freedom. You wanted freedom and you didn't want the bell to tell you what to do. That is awesome. And I think there's so few people that realize like the bell is a real thing, whether it's a buzzer on your phone, um, something on your computer popping up from your calendar, all of those things are telling you what to do. With that said, I do believe that discipline creates freedom. And so if you are structured, 
there is some value to that. But, you know, you get to dictate today where things go and how they go. And so was there anybody, well, I, that's probably too much of a leading question. How did you make the transition from teacher to insurance? Yeah. Uh, day by day. <laughs> um, I knew nothing about insurance. I, I, I got my, uh, my license in two, three weeks, which I mean, I studied like eight, nine hours a day, every day, seven days a week for three weeks and, and got it. Um, and I moved to a brand new city. I had no network. I, I literally had my college friends and that was it. So who do I, who do I look to provide these insurance services to? and all while learning what is insurance. Um, so it was definitely a challenge. I, I, I took in day by day, you know, I, I did self development and, and, you know, sales discussions, sales, you know, podcasts were still kind of early at that point, but you know, I listened to a couple podcasts and just kind of dug in and learned as much as I could about the product and then found a couple mentors in my office that, Hey, they're, they're getting these results. What are they doing? How are they maximizing what, they've done over the last X amount of years and how do I expeditiously get to that point? Right. And so let me guess, as soon as you walked in, people were falling over themselves trying to give you business and you didn't have any challenges, right? Exactly. Every word of that is exactly true. No, I, I wish that was, um, you like what happened? You realize, Hey man, I got to double down if this is really yeah. for me. So what I did was I, I, I sat down with my manager and I said, what, what does a top tier agent look like? And, and what do they do every day? And what do those top tier agents not do? So from the get-go, I knew what to do and what not to do. Um, and then from there, you know, I just, I just kind of taught myself, hey, as, as I'm, you know, observing others around me and in the office, you know, these top producers are letting these multiple things away. You know, they're just writing one line of business as a opposed to four or five. So what can I do to make sure I get three or, or four? Uh, and and can, can I provide a value, right? Because I always took that educational love, right? And implemented that into, into my discussion of, of, I'm not trying to sell you anything. And that's still true today. I don't want to sell you anything. Right. I right. want you to get this service that you feel comfortable with that is going to protect you. And if you feel comfortable with it, then that's all I care about. That's awesome. So, you know, success leaves clues, right? I mean, very rarely are we the first one over the mountain. And so if you can learn from other people, especially if they're coming back with arrows in their back <laughs> because somebody, yeah. right, then you got the opportunity to be more efficient in your approach. And so I think that's amazing. Did there come a point where, you know, you thought about going back to teaching because you weren't making income or were you able to just be locked in and dead set on this the whole time? Yeah. So there was a point a couple of years ago where, you know, I, I had some, uh, some circumstances come up that uh, really kind of made me, made me decide and, and maybe we can get into this at, a, at another point, but I made a career, not a career move, but a, a company move. Um, and it was more of like an entrepreneurial uh, gig, if you will, in insurance. And I was quote unquote recruited wrong and, and the pay structure was not what it was said to be. And so uh, a year into it, I found myself getting uh, a $418 check for the entire month and working 60 to 70 hours a week. And at that point I was like, man, I'm done. Like insurance, I'm out. It's been fun. It's been real, but where else can I go? Uh, and that kind of led me into the company that I'm at now. And it, it just, you know, I had, had an older kind of mentor fraternity brother that um, basically said, Hey, we have this brand new position. And I was like, man, I no, I don't think so. Uh, he said, just trust me. So that was my point. I was, I was out drum. I was, I was done with insurance and ready to move on. And, you know, it, it literally just kind of fell in the, in my lap by the grace of God. And, uh, and I, I re rekindled my passion. Hey guys, back in 2016, me and the team decided to formalize Dreamcatchers as an organization that can help people achieve their wildest dreams. If this is you, please visit our website at dreamshouldbereal.com in order to find out the details of our services and how we can help you become a Dreamcatcher. Talk to you soon. 
So tell me more about that guy that showed up, your fraternity brother. Um, how did, because I think, I believe we attract people into our lives so that when opportunities present themselves and, you know, we're at the right frequency, things happen. So had you guys been in constant communication the whole way? Did you happen to reconnect by chance? Like what happened that led to that discussion that allowed you to make this transition? Yeah. So at the time he was in his mid sixties. So he was a, a couple decades ahead of me. Uh, and I had met him twice. Uh, one at a, a fraternity alumni, alumni event. And then once because I was in the insurance industry in Kansas city and he took me to lunch and that's really it. We didn't really keep in contact. It was kind of one of those things of, Hey, if you ever think of me, let me know. Hey, if you ever want to get together again, let's do it. Um, but that's it. And, and, and he just, he, he knew that this position was starting and it was what I had been doing. And so he just reached out. Wow. He thought of you. Yeah. Something happened in those interactions that made him remember you and you being, in his opinion, a perfect fit for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, so were there some smaller challenges that you faced along the way? Yeah. So smaller challenges. I mean, obviously, so I, I moved companies a couple different times. So uh, from the captive side, which is like your bigger name insurance type of company, I've worked on that side a couple different times and the insurance brokerage side a couple times. So, you know, smaller challenges were, you know, just different management styles and, and learning, you know, if I have to do certain things or act a certain way or be a certain type of person with these different companies, I, I have to learn that. Um, not big, but you know, adjustments and, and adaptation. And that's one thing that I've definitely learned in any industry and in any skill. Uh, adaptation is definitely a great one to have. Um, you know, another smaller uh, hump or, or challenge that, that I've had to kind of overcome is just, you know, growing a network, you know, moving to Kansas City and, and not knowing anybody outside of two years older and, and a year younger than me. Right. So how do I do that? And, you know, without without giving all my personal time away. Um, so that I, that's kind of I would say more of a medium one, but it's definitely uh, been on my radar since <laughs> before day one. <laughs> well, one thing that's kept coming up in this conversation is your net work is, you know, basically your net worth. I mean, the reality mm -hmm. of the situation is the folks that you had in your circle weren't the going to be your customers, the majority right. Them anyway, right? And so you had a, a serious problem and you call it a medium hurdle. I think it's huge. And I think it's one that plagues many people who are business owners and they have this product, one that's not targeted at their demographic, right? And so right. how do you get yourself into different circles for where people are actually doing the type of volume or the size deals that you need done in order to, you know, to be successful and be able to feed your family. I mean, that for me is, is a big one because, right. you know, you don't want to be transactional and it's really interesting about your approach. Like it's about education. It's about learning what people do and how you can help each other. And, you know, even when we first talked, it was like mutual benefit. Hey, what are you doing? How can I help you? Here's how you can help me. If you think about these opportunities and I'm just like, Hey, like, more of those interactions is what I think a lot of people are looking for. The transactions, one and done, bam, doesn't actually build a business long term. And I think a lot of people are being short sighted and just trying to write a policy and move on or, you know, whatever the transaction is. Because when yeah. you're that trusted advisor, people come back to you over and over again and they send their friends. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what was your first worst fear in the process? Oh, overall, because I mean, you, oh, you dramatic shifts. Yeah, I, I would say, honestly, one getting into quote unquote, the business world, right? I, I didn't know anything about the business world. I'd never taken uh, a business class in my life. Uh, I'd never, you know, experienced an internship. Uh, so I didn't really know anything at all. Um, so that was kind of like the big like, all right, let's, man, I, I hope it works, you know, and, and my, even until a couple of years ago, my whole mantra was, if it works, great, that means I'm successful, I'm making, you know, a living, and, you know, I'm happy. If it doesn't work, I can always move back home. <laughs> and and that, that, was, that was my mentality of, you know, either way, it's going to work out, 
but let's let's do everything I can to make it work. I think people miss that. It, it, either way, it's going to work out every time. It might not work out the way you see it working out, mm-hmm. but it's going to work out. So all of the fear and anxiety is probably for not because what you think the worst case scenario in, I can guarantee you it could be a hundred times worse. So, <laughs> yes. Courage. And then, I mean, you had a safety net too, right? You knew you weren't going to be sleeping under a bridge. And I pick a lot. I'd be like, man, if I don't figure this out, then I'm going to be sleeping under a bridge just because I'm trying to get that emotional trigger to go so that, you know, I'm as resourceful as possible. But you, you knew you weren't going to be sleeping under a bridge. And for a lot of people, I think being homeless is probably the worst fear. So that's really cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Did you hit rock bottom? I did. I did. So kind of in the time where... I got that $418 check for the entire month. Um, I was also in the middle of a lawsuit. So uh, I, got, I got sued and, and had to personally pay everything out of pocket. And so that, that kind of coupled all within eight months of, of each other. Ouch. Yeah. So, and that's kind of the other reason why I was like, man, I'm done with insurance. Like this has happened. I had a bad experience here and now this has happened. And I'm not making any money. I'm not even making a living to pay my bills. I got to do something different. So that was definitely my, my rock bottom moment for sure. Oh my gosh. So was it, how did you come out of that? I mean, so was there somebody that like jumped down in a hole with you and talked to you and then walked out with you? Did somebody just kind of throw you a rope and you pulled yourself out? Like, I think there's a few different ways people get out of that pit. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm lucky, you know, I have two very solid rocks in my life. One is my fiance, uh, soon to be wife in October. Um, so she was, she was definitely, you know, my, my rock and helping me every day. And, you know, obviously, uh, I kind of balanced on her to one part of the income, but to just sanity, you know, and, and everything else that's going on. Um, so that's one, the other one uh, is my family. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to have two wonderful parents and, and a brother that, uh, you know, if I, if I need anything, they drive, you know, it's only three hours, but at the same time, it's a three hour drive from Omaha to Kansas city. So, you know, they would drop anything that they, that they would be doing or, or whatever and spend whatever it is to, you know, get to me and, and help me out. So, um, definitely both of those were, were steady and, and very, very much helpful. So, I mean, now that you've come out on the other side of this, I mean, are you seeing some rewards for enduring the arduous journey? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, during that time, I mean, it's really when I kind of found my love for real estate, my love for, and what do I, what do I enjoy doing? Because I was looking to do something else. So I was looking within and and thinking, what do I want to do? How do I, you know, how do I still want to be in in the interactive part of of business? so fast forwarding a few years, you know, two, three years, um, you know, I, I still use that love and that passion that I learned in that darkest time of my life in my journey every day to, you know, both use it as self-development and, you know, help others continually educate. Um, you know, that passion has never went away, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I, I work with two very select type group of, of people. Um, in that being, you know, real estate investors and, and business owners, and then you know, successful family families and individuals, um, and that's all I do. You know, in insurance, you can literally do anything as far as you know. You can write insurance for you know the the guy who is penny pinching, and you can write business for you know a company like Coca Cola and anywhere in between. And um, so for me, it was just diving down and, and really looking specifically what do I want to do and how do I want to do that in my daily business and and it's really fueled my passion and my daily drive wow wow and so you know we we like happily ever after but has there been anything that's tried to pull you back into the space where it's like oh this is dark and bleak doomy and gloomy for sure I mean you know obviously it's different for everybody uh for me it's it's been more of a um a struggle of of balancing you know I, I do both personal lines. So your personal auto home umbrella life insurance type products, but also, you know, commercial. So working with businesses and working with, you know, multifamily investors. And, and so kind of balancing that has, has pulled me in different directions as far as, um, 
where do I envision my life three years, five years down the road, 20 years down the road? Um, so I'm still using that vision. And, and honestly, I'm still kind of trying to use my mentors and figure that out. Uh, I think it's all a, a special part of, of my journey and uh, just going day by day to, you know, dive into my passions and, and help, other, help others. Well, I hope you don't ever figure it out because if you get all the answers, then. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with that. So, I mean, you've mentioned self-development a few different times. So what's the biggest difference in your approach to life, you know, as you, from going through the process? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting you say that. Um, I think that the biggest thing is just n- not only developing one part of your life. It's very important to develop your personal as well as your professional, mm-hmm. as well as your faith, uh, you know, your physical, you know, it's, it, that's all self-development and, and self-help. So, um, you know, everybody lacks in, in two or three of those. Uh, and so trying to find that balance and, and having those daily rituals and routines of somewhat balancing them out and balancing your life uh, is very important. That's awesome. And so for my coaching clients, we actually have this kind of six tier model where it all starts with self image. And so you mentioned a few things that go into self image. And once you get your relationship with yourself, right, then you can go out and relate with people around you. Right. So then we work around the relationships that are closest to you, make sure that you're showing up in a way that you get treated with respect and you're respecting other folks. Following that we go into, um, career, right? Because career is probably the next most important thing after the people closest to you in your relationship with yourself. And part of the reason why we do that is because we think it's the biggest cause of stress in people's lives and those destructive behaviors to cope with it. And then we follow up with that with health. Um, If you have poor health, um, it's probably related to one of those three things we already mentioned, your career because of stress, your relationships because they're poor, or your relationship with yourself, which means you're doing some type of self-sabotaging. On top of that, we look at prosperity. If you don't have good health, it's going to take all of your prosperity. So let's fix the health before you go into prosperity. And then we finish up with significance. And so with that, you know, I want to ask you, hey, like, what are you most grateful for right now? Yeah, so you know, I, I'll go kind of personal and professional, you know, I'm really grateful for my fiance Haley that, you know, she takes care of me. She's planning a lot of this wedding by herself. And, um, you know, because I'm busier at work than she is, and she's kind of in a, a career change right now. And, uh, so all super, all super exciting, but she's kind of taken that rock off of me and, and my chest of, you know, doing more than I have. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, you know, the other one is just, I'm grateful for the place that I am in my career. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I, the stress is all self-induced, right? You know, so that's uh, a great, great problem to have. And so I'm, I'm grateful that I'm at a point that, you know, I'm, I'm happy in my career. I'm happy with what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm continually driven by that. And so I asked the gratitude question because yeah. follow it up with, what gift are you giving the world? I think every good thing comes from a place of gratitude. And so when you're giving things away, you got to have that gratitude first. So what gift are you giving the world? Yeah. So, and I, it's a kind of a reoccurring theme. So I really, any person that I meet or come across, whether it's online, LinkedIn, in person, on the phone, uh, I really try and provide some kind of value and preferably educational value to them. Um, You know, I'm, in an industry that even myself, I don't like to think about insurance. I don't like to quote insurance, nothing. I, I don't, it's, just, it's a pain to me, but it's what I do. And I, and I realize that, that, you know, others, others don't like doing that as well. Um, so the most I can educate and, and kind of help them is, is, you know, that's basically it, you know, creating the value and making people yeah. better. I like yeah. it. So what dream are you most focused on catching next, Matt? Yeah, so, uh, you know, my, my main thing is, is just creating uh, a life for, for our family. And, and, you know, whether that's an insurance or, you know, a, a blog or coaching business that I'm, I'm kind of starting. And um, so, you know, wh- wherever that takes me, you know, that's kind of where, where I'm, I'm excited to go. But, you know, as far as the dream, you know, it's, it's just – following my passion and, and that passion's education. So however that develops and evolves, that's where I'm going to go, man. 
Yeah. Your ability to surrender to the process and say yes is really admirable from my perspective, right? Um, because you've taken what I think most people would see as huge risk, right? You could have stayed in the school system for 30 years or whatever, went from class to class, day to day, um, and then walked out with your pension and be good to go. But you chose a path that you think is going to end up being more rewarding. And while, you know, educating the youth is awesome, uh, I think there's opportunity in educating adults and making the world a better place at a grander scale and being compensated a lot better for, you know, doing something that you love, which is educating. So uh, kudos to you. For Thanks, man. Surrendering to the process and going through the turmoil and challenges and not, you know, pulling the flag down, folding it up and putting it on the shelf and just submitting to the status quo. Um, yeah. What's the one thing you want people to take away from the talk? The one thing that I want people to take away from the call, I would say just, you know, everybody wants to help, but everybody has, um, or most people have something in the back that they want to try and force or, or put on you. Um, but when you come across that person or that group of people that truly care about you and helping you accept it, join and, and, and start sprinting. Don't, don't go easy. Just go all after it. Wow. All in, full out. I love it, man. That's the only way to be successful. You can't play with it. It'll be all the way in. Um, and so, guys, if you got it to this point of the conversation, you really enjoyed what Matt had to say, um, I'll make sure we link it up so you can find him on LinkedIn and just learn more about him or just say hi and thank you for sharing the story. Do us a favor. Give us a five-star rating and review um, and share this episode with somebody who's going through that place where they're trying to make a transition they don't really know how it's all going to work out. And they're just wondering, should I submit to the process? Should I surrender my will and do what is being put in front of me? I think Matt's being rewarded for that in a big way. And I'm pretty certain you will be able to as well. Um, so with that, thanks again, Matt. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Jerome. Thank you for joining the tribe today. We would love to hear from you. Please don't forget to rate, like, and share. Perhaps someone you know could benefit from what we've discussed. Until the next time, remember that your dreams should be real.